and I will I will go to bat for. But Kesh is like, I'm drunk, I'm sloppy. That's the like day all. Day it's gonna be an exciting one. All right, evil geniuses taking on immortals. Gonna be an exciting battle. Eg, if they win, could tie for first place. They very well could, Freak, and Evil Geniuses played pretty well yesterday. I want to shout out the entire team because they were coordinated. They also got their early leads a lot through CS and team play. And this is a team, when they were put together and this roster was announced at the beginning of the year, the main thing, the first thing out of everybody's mouths were like, okay, is it going to be coin flip games? Is it going to be crazy, you know, all ins and, uh, you know, looking around for sneak assassin plays? But it was really controlled, well coordinated, uh, aggressive play from EG. And this is what is setting them up at the top of the table here in the LCS with so many teams contesting up there. Uh, I think it's getting really exciting. And specifically, I want to shout out Jazuke because a lot of the coin flip, uh, you know, accusations are always going to be thrown at him uh, and he is known by a lot of the other LCS players as well as like you know a, a player that you can go after even if they're winning really hard to try and get a comeback kill you know get a pick here or there um, and uh, and those types of things can kind of haunt you but I think he's been so good for this team uh, yeah. really proactive with a, a lot of his plays uh, there was a couple of small missteps yesterday that we did see um, for opportunities and him getting picked off from Blitzcrank and the like, but they were quite uh, minor when you compare it to the previous year for him. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, if you look at 2020, it's it's not even close here. Jazuke in 2021 has been so much better, and it's part of the reason why EG are doing so well. Absolutely. I think, you know, Peak Jazuke makes this team very, very good. As I mentioned, they can tie for first for the win here. We've already seen them knock down the likes of Cloud9. So, uh, you know, they do seem to be really in, in the running of this one. Uh, there would be a four-way tie up there, I believe, at uh, four and one. And we'll see if they can do it up against Immortals. Uh, Immortals came out really, really good, you know, to start the league out. They had never had to play. They never got to play their whole roster during lock in So we said, okay, well, we don't know exactly how good or bad they would be. And they came out swinging, taking down Team Liquid in, in their opener. Since then, it's been really, really rough. Immortals have scarcely ever had a lead at 15, much like TSM. Uh, in the previous game, they've had a lead once uh, so far this year. And unlike TSM, they also have never turned those around. It's It's been rough going for Immortals uh, most of the whole way through. So we'll see if they can uh, improve things. We'll see if Revenge can lane Kingdom on counterpick somehow. And we'll see what happens in this game. Yeah, I, I definitely the uh, the the counter kill on the Alfari solo kill of uh, Aurelia sticks out in your mind, and that's yeah. when they got their full roster, and that's when the you know the hype is building for Immortals. See if they can recapture that uh, in Champ Select here. They are on blue side, so they also ban out the Senna. I do like that. I I keep I'm gonna keep on harping on it because I just feel like fasting Senna is so so powerful uh, with how many souls you can acquire right now and setting up your support. Um, to be much more than uh, paper thin, as we have known them to be. Jungle focus here on EG, really targeting Xersei. Xersei hasn't um, had the same influence that I expect him to have when he came over, come over with this team. So we'll we'll see what sort of flexibility he has here. I know that Immortals did run, you know, buff up the Hecarim uh, composition with uh, Senna uh, or uh, and. Um, uh, Seraphine, so that is still on the table if they wanted to opt for a a different jungle champion to try and buff up with her. But with the Camille lock-in, your mind immediately goes to Galio uh, and the like here for combination plays. Yeah, interesting as well to see EG looking more at Kaisa than maybe a, a Zaya who can who selfishly get away from Camille when she channels the ult. You press ult, there's plenty of time. These players will always be able to do it correctly. Uh, you know, Kaisa does have fewer escape opportunities. Insanity may well go to Galio, and you can't ult out of the Hextech. Like, you, you're, you're stuck there. So you, you got you got to be careful a little bit. But if that's the team does well, obviously you can be fine. If the team can peel or you're powerful enough yeah. to win the fights anyway, then, you know, it can come out okay. Uh, either way, though, Grave's going to be the hover, and we'll see what EG locks in. Yeah, you look for, like... Gragas or Azir, uh, something that you can uh, you know try and try and help and peel him for. And I know definitely, and I know definitely is a sucker for Kaisa. Huge, sure. huge hard eyes for this champion. Uh, he uh, individually loves playing it and loves going in with it. So uh, we shall see what the response here on the immortal side. Again, 
you think about the big Wongbo combos, um, and Xerxes even plays stuff like Jarvan, which is kind of kind of fringe meta, where they would just go all in on that type of uh, big Wombo combo. Doesn't look like it's going to be the case in this game. They do lock in the jungle AP for uh, for the AP threat here. I do also like Lilia setups for it. Um, if you can you can hit the seed, then you can get easy sleeps into Wombo combo setups, which is just as effective. Absolutely. Always good to mix damage types. Uh, you mentioned the Gragas while we were talking about EG and in ways of saving Deathly from the dives. Uh, of all the unbanned top laners, it's Impact's second most played, so a decent chance he will go for it. I don't think you really want to Gnar in this. And even then, I mean, Mega Gnar can do okay at, at peeling, but uh, yeah, Gragas, you know, and then weak side is a total, you know, totally reasonable way to go about this one. Uh, Rail locked in, obviously, she is outstanding as well. So Immortals have a lot of power in a lot of places, and they're going to bodyguard with Alistair instead, maybe. Yeah, I mean, Impact has gone for, you know, uh, you know other tank matchups, Gragas or Shen and stuff into the Camille. What I really want, Freak, and what I was hoping for and dreaming for yesterday uh, when Camille is picked against Impact is throw down the Jax and pick your SKT skin. I want to <laughs> see Impact wearing his freaking SKT skin straight blast from the past and have Sven Scaren play up there uh, around this man. Uh, they've talked about it so many times in interviews how this EG team are really bonded very quickly because they all trust each other and they have confidence uh, in each other's play and that any one of them can carry and they can play, play through that lane as well. Uh, doesn't look like uh, it's going to be the case here though. Let's see. Whittle down on some of the possible mid lane uh, blinds here because we kind of expect um, Oh, honestly, actually, they, they'll just, they could just start it off with impact pick and, and then save second uh, counter pick for, for yep. Jazuke here. So just take down some Jazuke champions. Syndra, uh, Rise would be probably be the two uh, go-tos there for Immortals. Then right. he, he would be forced on to, uh, like he has played Zoe, TF, um, Echo, those types of things. Well, you're seeing the physical damage mid dropped away with the Lucian, the Samira off the table as well for Raze down there. So I'm not gonna get to play her. Uh, one final band comes through. I think, yeah, Ryze can make a lot of sense. Obviously, we know it's very easy for them to give Jizuka a counter pick. I don't think it's Sanity's going to take Ryze from him, for example. So it's not like you're even contesting that one. Uh, Orianna going to be the drop instead, which is actually Sanity's most played. So going to push him down the line a bit. I actually think this Lucian ban is an AD carry Lucian ban because I know Raze plays it and likes it into Kai'Sa. It is really good into Kai'Sa for slamming lane and trying uh, to to win that way. So a uh, little bit of a cover there for, for yeah. Deathly for having the, the early pickup of the Kai'Sa. Uh, and we do get our Gragas that we've been yeah. waiting for. I, I, uh, I love it again. Still not a huge fan of the Orianna ban when you could have banned away the Gragas we all knew was coming. Maybe they thought that the replacement was going to be just as good. You know, again, things like Shen were up, don't get me wrong. And maybe they're like, actually, we're afraid of Shen, so we'd rather you pick Gragas. There, there's logic there, but <laughs> I think people all saw the Gragas coming, and it is a little weird to see that one just be left up. Uh, but it does mean, yeah, if they're going to play physical damage elsewhere, it means Seraphine can come through. Now, Seraphine mid is very, very good, especially if you want to play a more supportive style. That is a possibility. And indeed, it is Seraphine mid because Tristan is coming through. 10% chance for Zana's mid, but I don't think it's going to happen. Freak, I love this. This is actually perfect. Uh, in our flex queues, I've swapped over to AD carry player. And okay. the first champion I decided to main was Tristana. Yeah. Um, it's the most fun bottom lane champion for me so far because you go Hail of Blades, you rocket jump in, Seraphine yep. follows it up, it snares instantly off the rocket jump slow, you explosive shot and just burst them down. Uh, so exciting for possible combinations there. So... Um, it, it, yeah, it's going to be, the, it looks like possible uh, bottom lane Seraphine. They could still switch it. Could be mid lane Seraphine. Of course. Um, and, and it is good. It could be they've got until 20 seconds. Uh, insanity solo lane Tristana. Still hype though. Uh, I'm still hoping he goes uh, Hail of Blades into oh, LeBlanc. Oh, you always Hail of Blades. There's like no choice. Yeah, uh, uh, into LeBlanc. You have to be a little bit more careful. But Tristana's got multiple outs. Um, you know, for for the all ins there. So so that also does make sense. Um, and a lot of the teams that have had this Seraphine priority have have been very, very bullish with it, I feel like. Um, yep. FlyQuest and Immortals are, are the two that really come to mind. Um, and yes, they, they are willing to, to shift around to multiple roles, but it's mainly been in the bottom lanes for them. And we have, uh, haven't seen a lot of the solo lane Seraphine like we did in uh, you know, Niski playing in yep. LEC and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. LPL. 
Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a fun one, though, regardless. I I'm always a big fan of teams that are, you know, going to try more things out. I think Tristmid is very good. I think Seraphine, as a farmer, is, you know, good and, uh, you know, across the two roles where she makes sense. So I think that's really solid. Evil Geniuses, don't get me wrong, though, have a lot of power in the right hands. Jazuke, we talk about his rise a fair bit, but his LeBlanc is, I think, equally as scary. Can really get a lot done of this champion. It definitely gets his tried and true Kaisa with the Alistair combo. That's like mm. very standard. Uh, we know Ignar is outstanding at flanks, outstanding at roaming. He's got the kind of champion he wants to play. And hey, Impact got to wait till after all five bands got thrown out, and he gets a very comfortable tank grab. He's up in the top side. So, uh, EG have the makings of a great comp that can easily win this game. And Immortals, uh, they do have enough frontline with Destiny and with Revenge that they can, you know, throw Seraphine spells over the top and and get good team fights. So freak, I threw it out there. Uh, I hope he still goes Hail of Blades. And you're like, ah, yeah, yeah, always, 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 yeah. always, except for this time for insanity. Yeah. I, I mean, I think Hale is just strictly better, though. Like, realistically. I, I agree. I agree. But uh, but he has gone for the press, the attack. Um, I mean, you can get exposure damage uh, for for your teammates for setup. Um, but I, I do. Yeah, I, don't, I, I definitely love the Hail of Blades for, for the all-in effectiveness of the champion. Right. Um, oh, let's get trading early. He does not shy away. Get so three trouble. procs just, okay. to buff up that That's explosive. That's so dumb, though. Like, I don't know why you would ever take that trade. You always lose these trades to Tristana, so that that that's a hard int by Jazuke. I think he's just never played against Tristan in his life because I mean, who's played against that champion knows better than to take that kind of trade. Uh, yeah, in this case, he gave him all three auto attacks, so you know, press attack looked really good there. But uh, yeah, normally you don't get to get all those autos off like that. Exactly. Um, now, a as it progresses too, you get. Uh, full control of the minion wave because of the nature of explosive shot uh, for Tristana. So this is going to set up Xerse. We've been looking at him to have more of an impact for this immortal squad. Um, you know, ever ever since their first win, uh, trying to step up. And if you have a Tristana that both pushes the wave mid, threatens turret plates like no other, uh, being able to explosive shot and rapid fire those down and, and gain tower pressure as well, I, I think her plus the Lilia possible setup here and going for, you know, Raptor steals, uh, getting your uh, deep wards here by Raptors and up by blue slash gromp are going to be pretty important for this Immortal squad, that Tristana Lilia has the potential to have so much influence. Nice ward comes down. You saw Insanity put it down right over the wall. That's going to track if Graves wants to gank through the left-hand side, unless he does something really big, like jump over the Baron wall and then go through Brush. But yeah, pretty standard clear here for Svenskaren, heavy top side, the end of the bottom side of the jungle. Uh, you know, standard, you know, looking towards a, a five or six camp clear before you find yourself in the rest of it. Revenge finds his backflip, gets a couple of shots in, but doesn't get a lot out of the shield overall. Impact managed to land the stun before the magic damage shield came across, so an okay trade. A big wave ready to be claimed. I don't know if Revenge can deny almost any of it, but Xerxe is here and impacts at 350 health, so theoretically can be a dive. Graves is nowhere nearby, oh, and yeah. here's the TP. This is the play. Who's going to pull aggro? How's it going to go? Waiting for the attacks to come in. They're going to have Tristana come across. It's got revenge with the aggro. He's got to kite away, flash to make sure, and first blood comes through to insanity. Helps them deny the farm and gets rewarded with 400 gold. <laughs> Teleport up to the top side. Should be able to get back to his tower too. You see Jazuke pushing the minion wave in right now. Denies a few of the minions and gets a little turret damage. But this is well worth it for Immortals. You see the teleport channeled on the minion with tower aggro. So the wave's not even getting damaged at all. They wait for the arrival. Immediate rocket jump in into explosive shot. He's toast. Revenge almost able to get out without taking one more turret shot flashes for good measure there and eg all they get to counter with is a bit of krug health and it's only the one large that's not even much rewards out of the camp yeah uh, just delays the second respawn because he leaves the second uh little medium krug there but that is that is not gonna uh, put any sort of dent into Xerxes' pockets, and they're so happy with getting first blood onto Insanity on this Tristana mid, which is so good at snowballing. Uh, let's see about the reset. A couple more long swords. Uh, so he's got full inventory of the starter kit. Damage towards Destiny. Nice play by Ignar. Says, I know you're gonna go for the cannon. We'll headbutt pull when it comes across. Is aftershock Alistair, by the way? Let's some frontline and take the fights a bit more easily in the early game, uh, since you're not relying on the ultimate for that one. So uh, I do like that there are players who will go back and forth. I think there is definitely a time and place for Aftershock Alistair. 
Good to see that still in play to some degree. As Immortals are pretty close in farm down there. We were equal CS up until exactly that point. It will be one dropped overall, 39 to 40, so still pretty close down there. But it is EG getting a pretty easy recall across. And just that same 800 gold difference so far in this game, crushing towards nine. And this is interesting. Ignar, okay, gonna play it a bit more safely. Could have chosen to try to catch the wave and, and freeze it, but Immortals playing close enough up. Yeah, they have, they have to stop Ignar from freezing this. Someone's gotta stop the recall. Otherwise, you're gonna lose like an entire wave here. Ugh, all right, Th this is going to cost a wave. Um, if EG wanna hard freeze it, it's, it's gonna be a lot of golden XP lost by Immortals. Yeah, it's uh, on the cannon, so it has a little bit of extra firepower there, but definitely arrives back. Well done, Ignar. Uh, nice and juicy for himself. They even have a look, a deep ward here in the side brush. No teleports available, though, so uh, I guess that doesn't uh, matter too much. Just possible uh, through lane ganks or something like that. Revenge, though, on the top side. The investment of the teleport from Insanity up there and early dive from Xersei denying impact that wave. It was a significant amount of experience in addition to getting the gold bonus. And when you set up Camille for early leads, um, even if she doesn't get the kill credit, it can have a rippling effect through the rest of the map here because she does uh, go for picks and roam so well with hookshot ultimate combination. Svenskaren though gonna pop over the back of the dragon and, and clear out the rest of that vision before it gets started. And not gonna find the rest of it there. Destiny, yeah, one of the big things that happens is if you wanna run fast, you gotta be in horsey form first, which means you have the skill shot for the crowd control. If you're starting like this, then you can jump to the horse and then you get the fling backwards. But now, speaking of flings backwards, big damage towards Rays and Ignar has to now run away. But be careful because you are a level four Alistair and Aftershock is down. Flash and Ignite are gone. Rays only burn the heal. That's a positive play for Immortals there as they can heal back up. No problem with just the sustain tools. So far, so good. We'll call it Jujuka has some pretty solid farm. I got to back as well for some Sork Shoes now. Uh, aren't seeing too much done mid lane just yet. No turret plates taken despite the gold injection towards Insanity. So haven't seen too much come through to the Trasana yet. Uh, I think that's pretty. that was pretty risky from Ignar too because Revenge's teleport was only a few seconds off cooldown. And I guess they have it timed exactly, but starting off a skirmish like that, committing uh, in the river could be very, very dangerous for them uh, for the duration of Impact's cooldown right now on his teleport. Can't join at all. Yes, Gragas does have good waves if he has enough mana of interrupting a teleport. Revenge would have to back way off the minion wave to go get it off and make a bottom play uh, because of the ultimate. But uh, it is very dangerous for EG to try and play around bottom half of the map right now. So Svenskaren goes top side instead. See if it will pay off at all. He's definitely not spotted while doing this. It gives Impact the ability to go fight this control ward. And they know he's in that brush. They absolutely know he's there. So this is going to be the combo. Oh, 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 blind ult, blind ult. ult. Hello? Wait, what? Uh, I feel okay, like you just take arrival, that play. On arrival, then? No, okay. Uh, I mean, at this point now, they can be afraid of Lily or something, but I don't know why you don't just take that play. Like, you just smoke screen the brush or something. I feel like you just do it, but okay. okay they made him long enough. Like, at this point, like, ha, uh, okay, then he hook shots away. Ah, that feels like a missed nice. opportunity. That yeah, really feels I, like a missed uh, opportunity. Uh, revenge, uh, revenge gonna escape. He didn't even know how dangerous it was. But the recall goes off, uh, gets the full reset here, teleports back. So they also kind of bridge that gap of bottom lane teleport discrepancy. Okay, yeah. End of the day, it's going to be all right there. And a uh, quick trade. And, and that is the, so that trade right there, like that is what I expect these mid lane fights to be like, where Insanity really only gets one auto attack off. But hold on, it's a 2 on 2 top side. Great ult to immune the ult to the flash Q4 and a double sleep. This is probably going to be a double kill. I don't know how you're going to get out here, Sven Skaren. Flash is away, is running for his life. But guess what? Lilia is faster. Watch out if you're going down. Two kills top side, Immortal striking strong. All right, Zersei will come make the play on top side. He's just off to a bunch of extra gold here. Double kills picked up, Immortals. All right, let's take a look at how it actually started out. Did he get, yeah, he was just trailing through. They didn't see him. He was just outside of the fog of war. So when he goes to help him push in the wave, Svenskarno was just trying to help Impact get this wave in. 
Um, they actually, with the Gragas ultimate, Revenge dodges it uh, because he still has Hexac ultimatum, jumps up into the air. They turn it around. Perfect timing here. I like that from Cersei, trying to take advantage of the wave in the state right in front of Revenge's turret. This is kind of a rippling effect of, of the lack of play last time for EG, not being able to get it in. And then Cersei comes to punish them for it. Really good timing there and, uh, and reading it for Revenge. All right, Insanity, the chance at a turret plate, and might have used E to push the wave in with Demolish, though, but at least grab a single turret plate, so that's going to feel okay. But yeah, Juzuki doesn't have the health to trade back, so E auto. And yeah, in a trade that short, even Halo Blades won't save you. But in, in any time where Juke actually tries to fight and deal damage to Trist, that's where Halo Blades gives you the three autos and it gives you the gigantic chunk. Like that kind of situation where you can try to get some damage across. End of the day, not going to be a huge determinant of this game, but it would have given him a little bit more pressure. He's picking a more team fight focused rune where he is going to get more damage on frontline. You know, a Gragas or an Alistair where he's hitting more than just the three autos. Uh, end of the day, it's just going to be ward clearing now. Bottom side, Immortals and EG still mostly trading farm back down there. Definitely with a very small CS lead, but not a big one. Seraphine's going to be comfortable. All right. Meanwhile, this top side is getting worse and worse for the big boy Gragas. Uh, Camille here. Now, let's see the wave in a, in a little bit of a difficult spot, but he doesn't actually have too much pressure from, uh, from a graves Gragas combination. Uh, so Revenge already showing that he can easily ultimate the Gragas ultimate. Uh, definitely has fingers, <laughs> plus he's got the flash ready as well. And this is going to continue to be Camille push in, then look for those roams that could be so oppressive Ooh. in the jungle. Headbutt pull for Ignar, but the big rail engage from Destiny. Zuke is ignited and running away for his life. He'll barely stay alive, but a sleepy Sven Scare is going to get Buster shut down. And now Impact is in the play, but has no cooldowns left. Zuke comes in for the Ignite, the auto, the Electrocute, and the kill. Ult comes across, finds Impact, but the jump is not going to be enough. Can't backflip for enough damage. Impact will stay alive. Live a close fight back and forth overall two to two. And because jungler down here for EG, even though they've got reinforcements, they're definitely heading down mid lane. They can't go for the dragon. Uh, Zerse heading up top side to get that wave in for Immortals. Here's the combination. They get the re-engage from Destiny, counter engage on Jazuke and Sven Skarin. And you see Insanity just uses the ultimate for the execute on Sven Skarin right out of the sleep. Auto ultimate, enough damage. And Jazuke trades here in the end, going in, knowing for it. Flash used as well uh, to make sure that he's under tower and they won't complete that dive. Top side, though, ripple effect. Rift Herald into top side tower kill here, greatly yeah. accelerating this Camille. There's so much room for Revenge to work with. Revenge is going to be gigantic here. Look at the CS lead he's got. He got the share of all those turret plates. He's going to be great. Yes, Sven Skarin, good job. You're going to grab the Cloud Drake. That's a nice pickup there. Impact denies the charge in the second turret, so good job to him. But you can see the gold difference here is massive. 3.8 thousand. That is huge to Immortals. And this is the this is the debate between you know early dragons and a lot of uh, focus on topside and early gold. And I love when you can get upwards of 3k. You would take that any day of the week over any sort of uh, early dragon lead here. Immortals have such a good setup for this Camille. Triforce already completed plus life steal in the side lane. So revenge is side lane king right now. Uh, nobody can really go contest for EG. So they end up in a situation where long lane on top side, uh, super strong Camille that they have to worry about. But Lilia also is off to such a good start that Xersei is visiting these lanes, uh, you know, fishing for seeds here and possible sleeps for setup. So even transitioning becomes difficult for EG. And they're just working on their defensive vision through their own jungle right now uh, to try and step the, stop the bleeding a little bit. We'll see if the tourniquets work right now. Impact is walking topside to catch the waves. And it's kind of on Immortals to keep the pressure going a bit. Unfortunate for them that they did lose Dragon. Uh, that was, of course, a good play by Sven Skarin to kind of answer bot lane as Herald was being summoned topside. But it means that in unless Immortals can find themselves sieging more turrets, you know, they don't they don't have great siegers, right? So Camille, who's ahead, is you know, in top lane and, and may roam down, may find Xerse here. Okay, that could be pretty good. Impact, he is surrounded. <laughs> I don't know if he has a good way out. He has ulti, but no flash. Xerse's here on the other side. Okay, he body slams over. Not going to get that one. Going to go for the sleep just to make sure it's all going to be okay. There's the bop. There's the kill. Xerse is on a killing spree. 
Long lane, Freak, try and get away from Camille. Uh, it's going to be very difficult. And bottom side is the, you know, their weak side, but everybody's been evacuated. So EG can can get something back. They'll get some turret damage, but um, it's going to be the same story on top side for Immortals. And why I like the choice from Immortals, um, after the mid lane skirmish, they head right to the Rift Herald, right to the top side, instead of going for the early Dragon. Uh, attempt at the re-engage here uh, from EG, but they're not going to catch anybody unawares, and Raze and Destiny actually can slip in for the defense. I, I actually really like it because with the Tristana, in getting ahead on these rotations with uh, Camille pushing side lanes, you can actually annihilate these turrets uh, so quickly if you're left alone at all. Explosive shot on those this late just blows them right up, and Immortals can, can then bring it together with their Seraphine Rel kind of double supportish style bottom lane uh, with yep. Moonstone completed to a really massive team fight as well. And of course, on the other side, you really want to try to keep Seraphine stuck in lane. Right? You really want her to be stuck down there in the two-on-two because -two, her her uh, her item choices do not help you Bye -bye. in almost any way in winning that battle up against Kai'Sa. The, the MR is not going to be much for the Verdant Barrier either. And Revenge trading up with the top side. The Herald going to crash into mid. Ult's coming across in Sanity, burning down. Will he die to ignite or the red buff? Just not quite. <laughs> He's not dead, but how are you going to get away? There's the easy kill. Impact finds it. It took three people, but they knocked him down and Sanity drops. Insanity down. Uh, the tower did go down, and he did get off the extra Rift Rail charge. You see uh, the mid lane turret took that damage, but uh, giving away too many of those kills to EG could be very, very dangerous, uh, yep. especially with the amount of burst damage that they have on this team. Don't count them out as far as get, getting right back into it uh, with some of these picks. So good root there from Jazuke locks him up with the chain. Uh, and uh, with the extra ignite damage, as you said, you know, he almost sees his way out, but right into Daddy Gragas' arms right here, yep. and back comes a collect. Yep. Easy pickup afterwards. So we get back onto this one, and we are ready to keep this game moving. The gold th difference still 4,000. Moonstone number two comes through. Uh, which does mean you're really light on magic damage here. Uh, it's not not the worst thing ever, especially if you're just going to keep healing up your front line, but uh, this is one of the cases where I would have probably liked to see Leandries on one of those two champions. Bulwark comes through as uh, the, the max tier Sightstone is in for Destiny. Uh, and we're just going to hope that, you know, there is enough damage because obviously you're going to see an armor stat come through. Camille and Tristana are the ones with all the gold, so we've got Steel Caps already in for impact. We're expecting to see more armor come out of everyone else as well, so... Uh, one thing to consider is you can run out of damage if you are monotyped and, and their tanks build that, that resistance. But the dragon comes up in 15 seconds, and Immortals with the gold lead should be the ones to take this one. Definitely expect that to be the case. Impact does have teleport for top side, so uh, EG do have possible options here. And whenever you have a champion like that, um, that can split up a team fight, if you get a perfect Gragas ultimate, there's definitely possibilities of trying to break them apart. Try and knock the Moonstones away from one target, kill off the target immediately um, while they're separated, and, and thrive in the chaos here. Jizuke nice goes fight, for a Jizuke. quick trade. Raze has to flash away, and Sanity's on the other side of the fight. He's going to clear out mid lane, but could not be part of the 5v4. So EG through uh, movement and better positioning, despite the gigantic gold deficit, are starting Dragon, and we're on the inside track. They've got Vision Control, they've got the Scuttle, they've got the Control Ward, although Immortals have one as well, and Revenge not going to play Flank, going to go back into the pit himself. Five on five, right in front. Alice looking for the flank, but he's not going to be there quite in time. Spike fight got to come across. Well done to Svenskeren. And the fight's going to continue. Here comes the dive in for Destiny. The re-engage is going to come across. It's one already to Tristana. Asleep is the Gragas. The re-engage could look good. And it's time for the healing. The double moons to renew are going to get them all just topped off. And it's time for EG to run away. They get a dragon, but at what cost? They're going to lose at least two kills. At least three now. Jazuke on a rough spot as well. Will stay down to the bottom side. But Alistair is going to be surrounded. They will claim kill number four. You take those every single time. There's no Baron to kill, but there is a Jazuke. And this is going to be pretty easy for Revenge. There's the backflip. There's a ton of damage. You're right in front of Xerxe. And look at that. The Bud Light Ace for Immortals. Look at the 3 and one EG. Yeah, they even get to shove out lanes and get the first reset after the deaths as well. Bottom outer tower will be picked up by Revenge as well. Uh, on the next wave, he does have the Trinity Force, so plenty of attack speed. Plus, he just melts uh, turrets with the Trinity. Oh, no, he's not sticking he's around for it. All right, fine. Go for the reset. That's fine. You guys are up. swimming in gold already. Look yeah. at the bounties rack up here for Immortals.
I, th I think the play is really heavily a Baron setup at this point. I mean, you look at the fact that you have uh, ulti on Tristana. It's one of the best anti-jungle tools really out there because you can kind of just be in range of DPSing Baron. And if you see Svenskaren, you just like jump Buster Shot and he's out and you can finish the smite. All right, Rel Seraphine. Rel Seraphine team fights, Freak. What an engage there. Destiny goes in. Gets the CC combination, Ray's fires off his ultimate over the top, range extended, and from them it's kind of scatter for EG because you're broken by too many good AoE teamfight uh, ultis. Lilia sleep follows it up, uh, Insanity not going down in the burst means with the double moonstones they survive easily and they're able to get right back out onto the field. Immortals! Coming back so strong. LCS is up for grabs, Freak. Yeah. All he expected uh, wins here going turn upside down really quickly. And in that last team fight, everybody doing their parts for Immortals too. No uh, you know, big standout there uh, as they're all able to contribute significant amount. Yeah, true. You Staff Flowing Water comes through for Xerxes, which is obviously some ability power for him. Uh, it, that is always a weird one because you do have to land the damage in order for Moonstone to heal someone to finally get Moonstone power. So it is, you know, a little slow going in some cases. You can't turn it on until you land a Swirl Seed on an enemy champion, something like that. So uh, obviously it's still going for the Medic build, though. Those are the items you follow for. But, you know, compared to someone like Seraphine, where it's very easy, just like, I press W. So, you know, I got the buff. It, it's a little yeah. harder to apply is all. Work on your bowling accuracy a little bit. Yep. This is going to get so difficult for EG, though. But let's see. Impact goes for the 1v1. Hits the ultimate. Yep. Decent damage for the combo. And Insanity's like, you know what? I uh, I still have shield bow. Like, I can still lifesteal thank you. But we'll burn the ult just to make sure I'm safe. Uh, didn't know if anyone else was coming around. Had a couple of wards, but there were still paths that could have been taken uh, to surprise him. So, okay, burns the ulti, trades those back and forth. But, yeah, Impact, he can catch the wave. He can slowly regen. Insanity can be back to full off of one more camp or one more wave. Yeah, and they, they have so many options, too, with uh, with the rest of the map under control. You can just keep on pushing up bottom side. Uh, Tiamat completed for revenge as well. He just annihilates those lanes. You can see uh, Jizuke even answering in the 1v1. He just has to sit at tower to receive. Uh, buys them 30 seconds every single time. Destiny jumps the wall to make sure he's not going to get chased down by Ignar, anyone. Not an important cooldown to lose by any means. Zerxe getting his farm going, no problem. Gets rid of the control ward to drop out the vision. And honestly, despite the ace and the reset and all the gold income, we didn't see mortals get really anything out of it. They didn't knock down bottom outer. They didn't knock down mid tier two. Big chunk there, but he's still going to be rooted. I mean, wins the trade anyway, regardless. They're still going to go bowling. Not going to land that one, but now they will knock down the turret. But basically, the, the full five minutes passed, and really, they only picked up minion waves. They finally now uh, grabbed themselves one turret, but they didn't do much for a Baron setup. They didn't really get much taken away either just kind of resting on their gold lead and waiting for the third dragon so they can maybe get one on the board. Yeah, I think getting this one real quick and then transitioning your vision up to top half of the map is probably the play. Uh, they do open up, finishing off that tower. Now, finally, for the outer side. So it should set them up pretty decently for that play. Yeah, we got 23 seconds on the dragon. They've already got mid control. They've already pushed in bot. You can see how far back you get to play to get the wave. And they've, of course, sacrificed yeah. top pressure because they know that, you know, it's it's time for revenge to recall. We want you to be item spikes so that you are ready for the dragon fight itself. That means EG gets to go push for the turret. And if Spence guy went for damage, they could have knocked that turret down pretty easily. Ooh. Waiting for reinforcements, though. This time he's going to have Ignar. This is a 3v1. Revenge has to play it safely. Has to be careful. It says, okay, I'll hook shot away. And that is a turret claim, but it also means that EG are knowingly giving away control of the dragon. So Xerxes going to go and start this dragon up. No one's going to contest. I think EG, rightly so, find an objective trade because they knew they weren't going to contest that dragon. Nice little chain and then W out for Jizuke as well. Make sure he doesn't get uh, lose a bunch of chunk of health in the side lane there while they're giving away the dragon. As you said, gave it up knowingly, just getting some gold back for themselves. Impact on top side. EG still have options here. Um, again, Gragas and, and Alistar engage if they can. Um, you know, find this uh, flank combination to the outside. Definitely can make some moves here and try and, you know, follow up LeBlanc and Kaisa, both very mobile carries. Uh, can easily capitalize on one of those picks very quickly. But um, Immortals really like their setup here. They have such good control. All you have to do is reset to go grab your control wards, move them all over to this uh, Baron's side, uh, light up the red quadrant of EG's jungle, 
uh, and you won't have too much to worry about for the constant threat of these Barons. Revenge feels so, so good in these side lanes. Level lead for himself as well on anybody that even tries to oppose him, plus the full Ravenous now complete. So he just annihilates the waves, uh, full health constantly, and threatening the really strong all-in. Yeah, gonna feel real comfy up there, level 15. And yeah, top lane may be the point of pressure, going bowling through the wards, does not quite catch Ignar as he comes back to his side of the map. But still, the wards coming across. Destiny gonna spot out the Raptors, knows what's going on there with Svenskir, and he's just gonna clear and leave. Destiny is recalling an awards, so definitely going to stop that recall. Could have waited a few seconds and, you know, denied it longer. Regardless, though, it is still sweep into the ward kill, and Immortals, they have not... Oops! <laughs> nice try. Recall number yeah, he's still working on the equestrian uh, skills here. Uh, not able to get over the back of the pit, but you know what? Wasn't even trying anyways. So I'm just recalling. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It's just styled. Wanted the shield, because now with the shield, you're not going to get... Um, the, uh, a Kaisa W won't stop your recall. So that was that was the real play, you know? That, that helped make sure that it wasn't going to be a, a bad recall anymore. That was all it was. And okay, we still have the 7,000 gold difference. We know the dragon was given over, and it is still Immortals playing a very, very slow game. Um, and this is one thing that, you know, a lot of these... Uh, I mean, I don't even wanna, really want to call Immortals that much of a development team. Like, the, the majority of the roster actually have, uh, you know, years of experience. I mean, Revenge is a true rookie, and Insanity only played for part of the year on Immortals. But otherwise, it's people with, like, you know, three years each of experience. So... Uh, I, I do want good shot calling out of this roster. It is, you know, veteran heavy. Uh, and I don't know, I, I don't like exactly how slow they're playing this game. It feels like they could do more to contest for Baron, but they are going to force the ulti out of Ignar. They won't get him to flash, but it does mean you've got a pretty low health Alistair who can't contest as easily for the Baron setup. Yeah, I mean, every sort of uh, uh, contest is a group effort here. They have to all push to secure each other's safety, as you see. Safety and numbers, Freak. Huddle yeah. up, get behind Big Boy Impact. He can go for the face check, move in, get your vision down. And that has consequences because it allows Immortals to fully spread, play all three lanes. As you see, you can just permanently keep Insanity and Revenge split pushing. Tristana with Rocket Jump, with Buster Shot, very safe on the sides as we've seen him. Uh, definitely err on the side of more caution. And uh, safety, just Buster siding, just disengaging from anybody who tries to contest. They both have great AOE and can uh, keep the side lanes and pressure in their uh, favor while also retaining these wards over around Baron and trying to uh, slowly increase the lead over EG until this dragon arrives and kind of, you know, brings them to the other side of the map. Honestly, Immortals have a decent amount of turn as well. It doesn't have to be, uh, you know, going on Baron, using all of their sustain and their health to kind of infinitely tank it and uh, and lure out EG. They've got, if you hit a Swirl Seed, uh, you can get a really big turn. Long range engage from uh, the Rel Seraphine combo we already saw, but now Destiny under attack. Takes some decent damage down to 1k. Has to flash from the Alistair engage. Xerxes is around, gonna find a double sleep. Is the re-engage gonna be good? Alistair will pop, still charmed, and it hits two more. That's the kind of engage they wanted. They found the CC, and they're gonna find a whole bunch of kills. Definitely's gone, and Impact is gonna be third up. EG can only run away. You thought you caught Destiny, but his goal was to make the fight happen in the first place. Immortal's gonna get an easy look at Baron with only Sven Scarrett and Ignar alive. The Encore range is just so crazy, Freak. When you bounce it off multiple members, extending the range here, locking up Jizuke off of the tanks, and now they've got full control over Baron, Insanity, yep. and Destiny over the back of the wall, chasing him out of town. That's going to give you the rest of what you want. You can't miss this smite. If you tried, it's going to come through, and the gold lead is now 10,000. Ignar gets himself found out, has to flash away, does stay alive but that is the only play Immortals needed. Get the quick reset, get back on the map, and claim the next dragon. That's that turn, Freak. Uh, we're talking about the tools here for Immortals from the bottom lane with tremendous CC for themselves. Good flash by Destiny to avoid the combo. They kite out enough and wait for the teleport to start channeling, then sleep into Encore. Hits all three of them. Just Goomba stomping over EG members. Insanity's in there real quick. Oh my goodness, that looks like so much fun, honestly. They chase them all down, clean up the Baron, as you know, and Immortals are right back out to it. You'll love to see resurgences like this in the yeah. LCS teams that had dropped off a couple of games. Immortals on fire.
So this is kind of incredible. I mean, they've they've you know their first win was up against Team Liquid. That was a big lane kingdom by Revenge leading the charge. But I mean, they were close in gold the whole time. They they had to still kind of make it happen at 20 plus. Here against Evil Genius is another outstanding team. I mean, they just beat Cloud9 yesterday. They are getting another great set going here. Ignar gonna be knocked down. The chase maybe Trozuki not quite gonna be enough. Revenge losing health, but he's just gonna survive anyway as he's healed back up from his teammates. Immortals just in complete control the entire time. There was a great top lane play and then. Every single team fight has been better and better and better. Destiny going to take a little bit of damage here, but I mean, honestly, he's going to be fine overall. EG just stuck in their base, 4v5. They've got Rel ultimate still for Immortals as well. Destiny could look for it. Are they going to knock down the turret? The flash, the chase down for Revenge, finds the kill on his fence, Garen, with the shield already gone. There goes Destiny in, finding the knockback, finding the stun, and now that's going to be another kill picked up. Three for nothing. They can just end the game right now. Revenge will be dying, but definitely is pretty much left alone. Ignar's here, but it's a four versus two for Immortals to end the game, and they never let go of this one. The dragons weren't important. It was getting to the team fights, getting the three items, and the mid Tristana, the supports to make sure the soul lanes could do the work and the comp work beautifully immortals gonna find themselves their second win of the lcs split against another top team beautifully done you would love to see them consistently play at this level xerse goes up top to counter with the 2v2 gets revenge an early lead they also have the mid tristana roaming up insanity is hyped love the pick love the play from him all game long playing those side lanes as well knocking down the turrets and immortals move up to two and three joining the middle of the pack a very interesting based on the records are right now they're definitely outside of playoffs still but there are so many more games to play. Uh, you know, the midseason showdown is is going to be after every team plays 18 games. We're only five in right now. So the other 13, like, obviously, they can make the rest of the way up. And I just want to know which of the two Immortals teams we're going to see for the rest of the year, because they've taken down Team Liquid off of Lane Kingdom and good mid game shot calling. They've taken down EG off of just slaughtering the game overall. Bot went equal in a couple of supports, and they crushed solos in jungle. But they've also dropped three games by getting smashed. So I, I want to know, can they play to this level the whole time? Because if they do, this is an outstanding team. Yeah, I mean, they, they definitely can. Consistency is now what uh, Freak is looking for. Uh, don't want to see disappointed Freak anytime soon. Really con big congratulations to them for this win, though. I thought this one was super clean. Um, really like the picks as well and how they utilize them effectively. You know, also so much healing on them. They felt very secure in turning a lot of these team fights. Good Arel Seraphine usage. I don't think that combination gets through anytime soon, especially with how priority just individually Rel has at the moment and how so many support. Uh, have put in the time on that champion, but really well executed too. Yeah, I think Seraphine is a, a very, very, very strong champion. I think every team should have it in the pool. And that means you need to have comps that work around the champ, right? You get the early rel and you're like, all right, cool, we got it. And you're like, wait, Seraphine got through the second round of bans. We should play Seraphine as well. Okay, we need a comp then that can work with Seraphine rel, which means we need kind of a marksman carry mid laner. And and yes, we saw the Lucian ban come through. And, and yes, Insanity played that one once before, but well, you didn't ban the Trist as well. And if that's gone, is Quinn going to be the play? Like there has to be a, you know, a pool of champs that you can play around these kind of compositions. And I'm glad that Immortals have it, right? I'm glad Insanity has the pool so that when the draft goes this way and you get these outstanding options, Kobe, I know you think Rel is the best support and I think Seraphine is maybe the best bot laner. So you need comps that work with these champions, right? You, our you need powers to have the combined. <laughs> yeah, the, my, by our powers combined, you can ignore this, this bot way. lane and they outscale you because the support is so good. As long as the solos work and they did. Right, and so that that's kudos to Revenge, it's kudos to Zerse, and it's it's kudos to Insanity for making that all work together because yeah, top lane won, jungle mid helped, mid lane had the pressure, they got rift throw out of it, they donated all of it to um to, to the Camille, and Insanity was still doing really, really well, even though he wasn't getting the attention. He was leaving to get stuff done. So well done to Immortals, beautiful game, congrats on the win. Now that is all for me and Kobe, but after the break, we will hear from Insanity in the Verizon post game interview and join the State Farm analyst desk to wrap up the day. So don't go anywhere.
Welcome back to the LCS. We've got our last Verizon post game interview of the day, joined by Immortals Insanity. You know, I was really excited to see the Tristana pick coming out after you've been favoring the Oriana and the Zier lately. What made you and the rest of the team decide to bring this comp to the table? Uh, I mean, honestly, I think it's just a good champion overall. And they gave us a few champions that we weren't expecting to get. But I don't know. I just felt like having some fun today. You know, and as I said in an interview yesterday, I think it does seem like there's some kind of correlation between having fun and the victories. We'll have to track that throughout. But one thing that I'm sure you have been having a lot of fun with is trying to get to know your team more over the past few weeks, having a bit of a later start compared to some of the other rosters. What's the check-in status on that and how you and the rest of the team are coming together? Uh, I think we're coming together actually like really nicely. I think like all of us are just like fun people to be around. So we just have a good time whether we win or lose like and it allows us just to just improve game to game. It doesn't matter like if we win or lose. Like still, the end goal is just to be good enough at the end to make playoffs and win playoffs potentially. And the crazy thing is, when you're looking at this record, right? Yes, it is technically a losing record at this time, but your wins are against evil geniuses that have now been the talk of the town when talking about top teams, and then Team Liquid immediately after their lock-in victory. So, what's the deal with that coming in so clean against these top squads? Uh, I think, I think we just played really well against them, and I mean they are better opponents, but I think they're also making a lot of mistakes, but. I mean, a win is a win regardless, and I think we can take a lot away from these these games and still improve on that. Is there anything in particular that you and everyone are focusing on just in that sense of wanting to improve? Uh, just making sure our early game is clean enough to like get us to mid game and then making sure our mid game is clean to end out the game. Very simple, very straightforward well, this is... stuff. It's going to be a nice one to look at when it comes to this game, how straightforward it was with the clean start all the way to the finish. Insanity, thanks for stopping by. Yep, thank you. Great to see Insanity here at the start of the season, and we'll continue to watch his growth along with the rest of the Immortal squad. Let's go ahead and break down that last game on the State Farm Analyst Desk. Thank you very much, the Tigris. Well, I don't know what's gotten into our LCS teams this week, but boy, I am glad for whatever it is because it has made the games that much more interesting, the standings that much more interesting, and we will get to all of that kind of macro view of the league in just a moment. But we got to talk about this victory uh, cobbled together by Immortals, now sitting at two and three. Uh, primal top of the day. We talked about this being the best developmental roster. I, I know that that was Freak's words, uh, but I think a lot of us largely agreed with that and here one. they show us another element you know especially with the draft seraphine trist finding their way into the league yeah i think freak actually said that flyquest was the best development roster never mind Shh, let's james let's go. pretend let's Just pretend let he go. said immortals it, it's all good <laughs> uh, but i think imt is making a good argument for that not being the case and them being the best development roster i mean if we look at them they've now beaten tl and eg those are two out of the four teams that we had in the battle for first we've seen revenge do super well against some of the best top laners of the league and we saw zerse brought bring the veteran performance that we expected from him right he was supposed to be a rock from this team coming from the lec really creative jungler with a lot of creative pathing uh so the future is pretty bright for these guys yeah, I like their friend. drafts. Thank you for saving me there. Sorry, Mark. <laughs> I was going to say, I, I like their drafts too. You know, it's not just like, oh, the players are playing well and stuff. But like, this is a really cool comp. I mean, where you have the Seraphine in the AD carry position, you slot the AD carry into the top side, but then you still also have the Lilia, so you don't just have a totally physical damage heavy, um, you know, top half of the map. So like, it's actually a really well-balanced composition uh, while still hitting all the key things you want out of a quote-unquote standard comp. So all around, like just a really, really cool, clever draft that, that really came together. And then, you know, like Primal was saying, they piloted this comp very, very well. Well, and that's the thing for me, right? It's a, you, you look at the draft and it comes from the mid and the bot lane positions where a lot of the interesting stuff happened. But then in terms of play high, it was all about the top lane and the jungle. Xerse in revenge doing work side by side. I really like the blind pick Camille here. He wasn't punished for it. And when you're going for these top lane plays, I don't know what it is with Gragas, but I swear I've seen him get tower dove like plenty of times this season. <laughs> I don't know if it's a Gragas thing or a top lane thing, but I don't see like Renekton or anything getting dove. 
And when you watch this replay right here, this is why you do not gank a losing lane. It's a prime example. When you're playing solo queue and you're getting dumpster down in lane and you're asking for jungle help, this is why junglers don't want to come. Because if they do and it turns into 2v2, you're going to get double killed and this snowballs the game super heavily in the favor of the winning lane. So uh, don't always gank the losing lane despite them crying for help. <laughs> Say it again. Say it again for the no. people in back high, please. Uh, I gotta say, it was well set up as well. The fact that uh, they tried to gank the Camille, she escaped into the, the river and then dropped a pink ward. So when she went back to lane, it was like they had a false sense of security. I mean, all around, it was just a really clean topside snowball on the side for Revenge and Zerse. And that's what's exciting to see for, for Revenge, being such a young player, already being able to be played through, being able to convert those leads into actual game victories and not just like, hey, we got a gold lead and then they kind of fall apart. And I think that's some of the veteran experience coming through, but also a lot of the young guys stepping up as well in San on, on the Tristana pick uh, looked really, really impressive. Well, and that's the crucial piece, right? I mean, we've talked about, we've got a number of teams that have demonstrated abilities to, you know, to build early gold advantages. The real difference uh, between the top and bottom teams is closing out on that advantage. So great to see out of Immortals that, hey, 18 minutes into the game with a substantial lead, we can pilot a dragon fight like this to a 3-0 clean sweep. It was yeah, a and that really... Was... Oh. Go ahead, hi. It was a really sick engage from Destiny right there. I think Ignar was in a really bad spot. You notice that they're leasing a dragon and he went around the blue buff to try and flank, but he did that way too slow because by the time he got there, his team is already half dead. So it's just like one, good on IMT to engage right there, and two, bad on Ignar to like now try and do a flank. Boom. Closing it out in clean fashion. Uh, we did have that later uh, Baron fight. I know we didn't pull the replay for it. But that Seraphine ult, I just got to call it out. The like the seven screens away, Seraphine ult charms two people. I feel like, and I know Emily's not on the desk today, Primal, but I feel like if that isn't a good enough reason for more teams to be looking at this champion and finding a way to, to work it into their comms, I don't know what is a good reason. Yeah, and to channel, channel Emily for a bit, she's been going on for a while now about how busted this champion is. I think we saw a really smart implementation of it here. You know, even looking from the draft, they gave themselves option to flex either mid or bot, and they decided, okay, we'd rather have Trist create pressure on LB in, in lane. Uh, so I think we should be seeing this champ a little bit more. Oh, they got it for you, Jimmy. Oh, it. there it Thank is. Thank you. <laughs> I love it. Production's trying yeah. to tilt Dash one last time before the day's over. Is. Yeah, I hate this. I hate that this is allowed. Three charms from 17 screens away. I mean, it's like making giving Ezreal ult the ability to charm. I understand that there's <laughs> there's some <laughs> some actual mechanics or some you know something that goes into threading it through your own allies. But oh my goodness, that would make me so angry if I were in a game myself and didn't even see the champion yeah. on my screen who just who just did me in. You, uh, you take that LCS into solo victory. queue, try and do the same thing. You just start whiffing these things left and right. Like, I've, I've, I've done that before. We're like, man, that Blitzcrank game was so sick. I'm going to play Blitzcrank. Never land an important hook in your life. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. Yeah, Blitz is, a, Blitz is totally a counter to Tom Kench. They were talking about it on the LCS. Watch me go. And then just hook in, like, the, the Amumu into your team. <laughs> and let them full on ult everybody. Uh, this week of the LCS has been so interesting. And I know it's not over yet, but I do want to pull up the standings and, and take a look at where we stand at this point because with their victory today we got cloud nine rising up to the top alongside hundred thieves okay that might be expected but then you've got a four-way tie between evil geniuses tsm dignitas and team liquid for third followed by FlyQuest and immortals together at seventh and then golden guardians at ninth and clg holding it down in tenth but i mean these are wild game driving this is not at all to expectations so what is going on I guess what's going on is everyone is first place except CLG. Um, I, I, don't, I don't really know what else you could take away from today. I mean, I think the exciting thing for NA is we might have a really competitive league where, you know, there are no free wins uh, with, with the obvious exception. Uh, so I think uh, when we think about international performance and having a really robust league that can produce top teams, uh, this is pretty encouraging to see. Before we get ahead of ourselves here and talk about international performance, this begs me the question, if you're wondering how many first place teams we have, is it due to the nature of all of our teams are amazing? Or is it due to the nature of all of our teams are kind of, you know, meh? And mm -hmm. I'm not personally sold on the former, and I'm more so on the latter at the moment. It is still early season. We're roughly, you know, two weeks in with another day to go. So we have like 66% of the season to still go. I'm, I don't believe there's that many first place teams here. And as the season goes on, I'll, I, 
probably will see a bigger shift in the standings. Okay, I'll take the other side of that. Uh, okay. I think I think we've what we saw was some pretty high level play uh, from TSM. Granted, I think TL had an off day, and I think we saw a really great game between C9 and 100 Thieves. Yeah, there were some game losing mistakes, like saving private someday. But at the end of the day, like there's going to be mistakes on either side. And what I like is that we're seeing really proactive play from both teams. You know, I'm I'm curious then. Because I can understand both arguments, but Hi, as a as a former player, somebody who was in the league and has experienced uh, uh, seasons of dominance, and then seasons where uh, the teams feel a lot closer uh, than maybe they did in that initial C9 run. Do you have an opinion of which of which one might be healthier for the league? Is it really healthy for us to have uh, this many teams? I mean, we kind of had a triangle. We had EG beat Cloud9, but Cloud9 beat 100 Thieves, and then Immortals goes and beats EG. Is that a good thing for the league, or would you want there to be more definition in our ultimate tiers of where teams land? I think it doesn't matter too much, um, the difference between that. But what's most important is that the top teams are being challenged. So right now, with the top teams losing, that's good for us because when we're for example like 25-3 or 24-4 right it's not like we're improving that much playing against these teams we can practice getting leads and staying ahead but we don't get to really practice like playing from behind and when you go to world stages and play international teams it's not like you know how these guys play you don't know if they dodge left when they try to dodge your skill shot you don't know if they can't push this etc there's a lot of things you need to learn and the more you get challenged by your region, the better it is for that region. So I do like that there's a lot of teams that are fighting for first right now. It's just I'm worried that people are going to get optimistic that everyone is amazing because they're fighting for first. It's just like, is the skill level of our teams that are fighting for first high enough to, you know, fight against all the other regions? I really hope so. I want us to perform well and to do well, but I'm not sold on it yet. Yeah, because I think uh, competition is generally good. It's one, fun to watch, and two, means that hopefully there's some people to help each other improve. But it's not like a prerequisite. Dom Juan hard stomped LCK all year, then went and won Worlds. You know, like, you don't, like, if you just have one God tier team, that's fine. And that we've seen that at, in multiple regions, multiple years. Like, you know, sometimes there's just that one transcendent team that that's pub stomping all the other kitties out here. So, like, it's not necessarily a bad thing if you do have that one team, but, you know, you always do wonder sometimes about, you know, small, pawn big fish in that situation uh, but you could also just have a fiesta which is also not great you really have to just kind of trust your eyes a little bit yeah and i i think there's one thing we can probably agree on which is that na talent is relevant and competitive right we saw revenge was arguably player of the game up there with xerse uh and this is his second performance against an imported top obviously you know impact's been here a long, a long time but still you know tops who came from other countries and he's looked really really good in those games so i think the future's bright uh, I agree with High. We shouldn't get our hosts ahead of us, but I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, agree, agreed on all fronts. And in a lot of ways, that conversation around competition aligns with something I heard Jat say in an interview not too long ago, that it is a good thing that Team Liquid is losing games. Not from the perspective of a TL fan who wants to see, you know, all wins in the win column, but uh, it means that they're being challenged. It very much speaks to everything you guys, you guys just talked about in terms of improvement and investing in that young NA talent, because that's ultimately what's going to allow us to compete on the world stage. Let's look ahead at tomorrow's games. We'd be happy to have you spend your Valentine's Day with us here at the LCS, and we'll be starting out the day of love with an intense battle between Team Liquid and 100 Thieves. The best way to celebrate a day of love. Uh, we'll keep the action going all day long and close it out with Golden Guardians taking on CLG, still on the hunt for their very first win. For Valentine's Day, if you had to pick one of these games uh, to be your date, which one would it be? Mark? Uh... Cloud9? No, <laughs> Team Liquid. Team Liquid. They got DJ. Okay, there books. you go. I want... I want a nice date. I want like the top line, take me to the best restaurants, Ooh, driving the best cars, like all that. You know? Oh, that's a meta game right there. Is it whether, yeah, whether or not the date's good, at least you get a good meal out of it. Is that the mm -hmm. idea? Okay, yeah. Primal, what about you? I'll take GGCLG. You know, she's a late bloomer, but lots of personality. We can grow together. Okay, I like it. I like it. The long game. Looking for that first win for CLG. Hi, what about you? Which matchup uh, suits your fancy? Well, three of those teams are quote unquote my exes, so <laughs> probably not any of them. That's a good um, point. Yeah. So who does that right? So what does that leave us with? Sorry, I gotta, I gotta like quickly. So all right, so we got no Cloud Nine FlyQuest game then, right? Well, that's out. 
four and five. I thought right we now. agreed he's going back to TSM. Get back with your ex. <laughs> you going well, to TSM? It wouldn't be going back. Oh, it's not your ex. I've never been. We're gonna. There. It's not his ex, but he did. He did say he could pull off the bot lane plays, right? So, uh, mm. so maybe that one. No, like it can't be TSM. <laughs> yeah, this guy's hey, man, so picky, go man. single on Valentine's Damn. Day. Don't okay. let the corporate yeah. holiday push you high. You go yeah, right. single uh, and you're you know a happy what? Don't conform high. That's fine. You don't have to pick anybody. Don't TSM. let us rush your love life, my friend. That is going to do it for us here on the LCS today. <laughs> so on behalf of myself, the casters, the entire remote broadcast crew, thank you for watching. We'll see you tomorrow for more LCS. Until then, stay healthy, stay safe, and be good to each other. Good night.